guys. Uh, we'll cover the gradient descent as I have written as the soul of the learning algorithm. So not only in neural networks, but in general. So we'll uh, spend a little bit of time in this. So in this video, uh, my objective is to explain you the basic algorithm of uh, what gradient descent actually does. So in the last video you saw what gradient descent basically does is that we calculate the change in uh, this loss with respect to the weights and we add this particular loss uh, or use this particular loss direction of this particular loss to take steps in such a way that our overall loss is reduced okay so how do we do that here is uh, and this is how actually a neural network is trained is that initially you assign random weights to uh, all the uh, individual weights of the entire network i'm writing uh, writing m in general for all the weights okay uh, secondly, what we do is that we start a loop and this is basically how neural net is trained to and fro, to and fro movement. And we then compute with the current weight that I have, compute this particular value. Okay. I compute this particular value. Once this is done, then I have, uh, let's say this is the third step. Fourth is you're updating the weights. Okay. So once I know that this is the direction in which if I move with respect to Y, the loss will increase. What I would do is that I would take the uh, update the weights that this is the current weight. I would subtract this particular thing, which is basically saying that I'm moving in the opposite of this direction because of the negative sign and I'm moving this much. This is my learning weight. Okay. This is how big my steps are and in what direction is told by this particular number. Okay. Once I have updated this particular thing, then I will uh, basically loop back in here. Okay. And this loop will actually be uh, there until, and this is important until it converges. Now this convergence is something which is a bit difficult to interpret in different contexts, but basically I'll tell you what happens. So let's say this was weight earlier and this was weight now. Okay. If the difference between these two is less than some epsilon, let's say, then in that particular case, it means that my weights are not reducing anymore. Okay. Or it is reducing by a very small amount, which is where I should stop because the weight will never be perfect because you will never have a lossless function. Okay. You will still have a little bit of loss and this number will keep on changing even in like this much value for some of the weight. So if you want it to be like constant, the weight when, when it went in and what it came out should be the same exact same is not possible. Plus you will not be able to com uh, compare float values, right? And it will have a lot of decimals. So what we do is that the difference between the W which started and this particular updated W, if this particular value or for that matter, let's say this particular value is less than a small value, a very small value, let's say this value. So if the change that I'm actually going to do is less than this much, then I'm not going to do the change. I know that this has been optimized. Okay. And in the practical section towards the end of this course, when we discuss, I will tell you why this scenario has to be there. We can't wait it to converge to the very minimum because it will have a huge effect on computation. Okay. So basically let's say this is a scenario and uh, I have, uh, I'm at this particular point. If I do this particular thing, I will get, let's say this much magnitude in this direction. What I'm doing is reducing the magnitude by multiplying it with a smaller value. So the magnitude went from that to this much and by negative, I mean the opposite direction. So I'll move this much in this direction. Now at this particular point, this is going to be the magnitude. The magnitude will reduce. If you see the increment in this direction by taking a small step will uh, only increase, uh, will only decrease, right? So that's basically the slope of the line. So the slope is continuously reducing in this direction. So when I take the opposite, the, this particular step, the size of this step will keep on moving low. So initially, let's say it was five unit, then it will be three unit, two unit, one unit, half unit, one fourth a unit and like that. So the actual phenomena will happen something like this. It will be like this. This will be how we will be moving towards the minima. And once I have reached to a point where the difference between the last step and this step is not so much, I will stop. That is exactly what gradient descent is, nothing else. 
okay if you want to see it in the terms of codes then i will try to see so this particular step one the random allocation is this particular code that is weight equals to tf dot variables at random so you can use uh, other functions as well but here since you already know that you have uh, if you remember in this uh, earlier we defined a particular uh, tf dot sequential right so that sequential basically tells me what is the network like and if i then use this particular thing i can say that okay I, the program knows the network and it knows how many weights it has and it will uh, randomly allocate the values to that so i have randomly allocated the value step one does secondly i'll have to create a loop so while true okay so this loop will keep on going there is a way of uh, stopping this particular thing which we'll see later uh, the convergence this particular thing doesn't work in this exact way but this is the idea behind it okay so we have a particular way of stopping uh, we'll discuss uh, about that also in the practical uh, limitations of uh, neural network towards the end of this course so basically loop it till this situation where i basically compute this value which is this step that is compare the sorry this particular step that gradient you have to calculate the gradient now to calculate the gradient you need two things this and this so weights you have randomly allocated here and this jw is calculated here this loss is basically your jw so this will give me the w this will give me the jw and this step basically gives me the loss and the w i have given so this will basically calculate this value okay so this particular state uh, function calculate that value i have to define the g which is done here after that my weights will be updated as weight is now weight minus this is my learning step times gradient which is this particular value okay so this is how the code works this is basically what gradient descent is but how exactly do we work on this like what we will expand into this this particular value because this is what my gradient actually is right so i will expand a little bit on this particular value how does we calculate this or how does a neural network calculate this value and it will show you one more important thing that since this particular thing is calculated in terms of w and f of w and x this differentiation has to be easy because of this we had certain restriction that we cannot take any random nonlinear function we could have only taken a function which is easy to differentiate like this or that like okay so we will see that particular thing why that such a uh, thing uh, restriction is there we'll see all of those basically we will see the calculus behind this particular function in the next video along with it i will show you the dilemma that we have with the step size in the next to next video okay but this is uh, really important so please make sure that you understand what gradient descent is and how does it work